In this episode of The Fintech Files, we go on a deep dive into embedded investing with Raki Miller, Chief Product Officer at Drive Wealth, a unicorn that works with fintechs around the world to let their consumers trade anything, anytime, from anywhere. We're starting with a question from your host, George Ali, for us about the state of the brokerage industry. Let's drive into first the brokerage industry, because that's what we're talking about. Can you give us an overview of what le- legacy brokerage industry looks like? Yeah, and I think this is really Drywell's value proposition is, is understanding what needs to be done, but creating a full brand new technology stack from top to bottom in order to do it. And that's really facilitated uh, us to do many unique and innovative things, such as uh, fractional investing. Drywell was the pioneer of fractional investing in a way that is seamless and low risk for us. We also own the full stack. So if you think about every time you place a trade, you have one part of the brokerage industry that is executing that trade. Another part of the brokerage industry or the that's kind of matching the trades, finding buyers and sellers. And then you have a whole third part of the industry that is now settling and clearing and, and managing corporate actions and basically doing your asset management for you. So these silos have for the longest time just been completely separate. And at Drive Wealth, we're building technology for, for each of those and really stringing it together and then putting it within API for methodology so that our partners can integrate with us. They don't have to do any complicated migrations or, or set up with us. It's We have an open API stack, a, a sandbox environment. They come in, they imagine their experiences, they work with designers, they work with our designers, designers. And we also walk them through from a legal and compliance side, what they need to do in order to get to their first customer on. Just to understand really the technology that you had to build, you're trying to build a proprietary technology for the whole value chain, the whole spectrum. Let's say it starts execution and it ends in a Settlement, latching, custody. I think the technology drives the the innovation. Our belief is that what the industry has generally suffered with is very old technology. A lot of it was, you know, built in the 70s and 80s and not really changed that much. So programming paradigms have changed. Service paradigms have changed. People's expectations have changed. Some of these technologies were put in before the iPhone came. And now everyone's expectation of what interfaces need to be and how reactive their applications and their services need to be is completely different. Just think that something was built so many years ago, and now you have a completely different customer base. And I think this is what the new generation of fintechs tapped into. They're tapped into the current consumer that is used to just picking up their phone, and basically their entire world is there. Why not investing? And that's where the seed of embedded investing comes in. We really want to enable our partners to embed investing experiences anywhere that they can dream about it. We want to enable it. And yes, we definitely work with a lot of our partners, even on design items. But I have to say, we have some really amazing partners, just amazing ideas. And we were great enablers where we add value sometimes and on, on the sometimes you have to make sure things are compliant and make sure that uh, we're building it in a way that is clear to their customers. But it's always a collaboration with our partners they're just there's so many of them and they're all very unique and if we now go to the experience so this experience is delivered by an api correct and a partner the role that is just left to build this experience right correct deliver the, the experience summer. marketing all the good stuff the yes. direct to consumer route yes i remember so drive world saying that buying stock should be as easy as buying something like that. Maybe we can compare it a little bit with what I call tra- traditional investing. If I want to buy a stock, I, I sit down, I log into my computer, maybe I do some research, execute. What's the, the experience of embedding investing for the end user? Yeah, I think first of all is the the lowered bar of, of buying it. So a lot, many people cannot afford a share of Tesla, mm. for example, but most people can afford $2 of it. And so by, by lowering the bar of entry, you are now increasing the population that wants to have access that now feels like I can get access by a tremendous amount. So that's one key thing. And the other is the experiences matter in every part of the retail economy is slightly different. And people have their own backgrounds, they have their own biases, and there's also this sense of being confident about owning your financial future. And I think that traditionally, 
financial services has targeted really the middle, higher class, wealthy individuals, institutions. A lot of knowledge is presupposed and also a lot of kind of investing kind of confidence is presupposed. That's not the case with a majority of the world. And so I think what our partners are really doing is speaking to their audience getting them comfortable, making them understand and allowing them the tools so that they can make decisions themselves and grow their grow their future. So an example is where we're constantly talking to our partners around what products and services we should add. We recently launched a launch securities lending, which allows retail investors to they're buy if they're already buying and selling stocks, they just have shares sitting there. Now they can opt in to lend those out. And when they do that, they earn passive income and in the form of interest. So, you know, these are examples of things that we're adding to allow more, maybe more sophisticated investing techniques, but done in a very seamless fashion that anyone can understand. And they can start with something as low as like a dollar. And this is really a global phenomenon for us. Like we have partners all over the world. And we're seeing this happening everywhere, whether it's India, Brazil, you know, all over the place. No, one thing that I find is very interesting is also this um, kind of de-risking aspect of it because if it's a few dollars, on top of that, if it's part of a loyalty program, some kind of bonus, we've all been talking about financial education, people should be financial education, investing, etc. But it's a long process, it's complicated, whereas I think there's really great potential in turning it upside down and say, there you go, now you've got stocks. Uh, Absolutely. I... Yeah, I mean, my my own daughter invested in like this stock of a gaming company. And previously it'd be like an ordeal. Now it's easy. It's so easy. And she's 10 and she knows what buying looks like. She knows that the price goes up. She wants to check how much profit she made. Uh, People do by learning. And I think that's really important. Otherwise, you can just be standing on the sidelines and never want to dip your toe in. And all we're doing is reducing the bar. Yeah, and again, just thinking about the interesting aspect, what I also found very interesting, I mean, potentially game-changing is that it's not just about saving, but it's also that investing is becoming as easy as saving because there's one thing, right? Oh, I'm not going to buy that latte. I'm going to save it. But now what we could almost say is I'm not going to buy that latte. It's going straight into my portfolio. I've got $3 of Starbucks instead of... uh... (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I love this company. I, I want to, instead of having that latte, I'm going to support it by doing this and support with, so again, embedded means embedded in your life. Your investing is embedded in your life, the brands you interact with, the businesses you believe in. And now it's just an easier access for you to get into that. So it's good. it can be loyalty. It's the ease of uh, investing. It's also a, a su- supporting a company you like. And all that brings me a little bit to draw a comparison with crypto. Crypto is programmable money. I think the rails of our current the equities markets is starkly different that would be maybe you should join us in the product area this is like the type of stuff we talk about and and where innovations come from maybe the phrase i would use is like the the retail revolution if you think about Mm. the retail revolution and this movement of i can have access to the companies i love and talk about them and engage with my community about them and the blockchain industry is also very much community oriented and it's all about it. It's a different type of revolution, but there's definitely thematically, I can see. Yeah. What, and also what the fact thinking. that you can also potentially use, let's say, contextual data, because now it's not just, oh, I'm sitting at my desk and doing a brokerage. It's I'm interacting with these stocks while I'm looking by in the lab there. <laughs> Absolutely. You get news about it. You get updates on um, some you know, public announcement they're making. Yeah, definitely. It's very interactive, which, which is it's great. Like the, the, the smartphone has just revolutionized so much investing. And I think one thing that I've not a bit on Drive Wealth is you also actively try to help financial education and literacy. Are you able to talk a bit about that? I think we work with our partners. We, we have some partners that are focused on that mission. And a lot of the times we're B2B to C business. Mm. And so we work on definitely like regulation, compliance, education, do's and don'ts and other things. We work with the compliance teams of our partners. And I think definitely some of that gets into the end users as a financial education. But a lot of that messaging is driven by our partners. So some of the partners we have that are very mission driven around, let's say, women in investing or or, or certain parts of, of maybe a, a minority group or something like that. And it's global as well. And which is really the beauty of our business being in the infrastructure plays. We, we get to enable people to 
think big and, and, and do these things. And then that, that, so we're focused on creating the scale so we can allow people to do, add more products, more innovations, and, and go faster to market to these things and focus more on their customer, their branding, their messaging, financial education, things like that. In terms of outlook, what's the most exciting for you about the industry and right now? I mean, there's for for us as a company, we are excited this year. This year's almost over. Next year to, to you know add a lot more different products, work with countries maybe we've not worked in, expand in countries that we already have, look at international. I mean, there's just so much uh, stuff going on. And as you had alluded to earlier, I think the fundraise really has, we our plans were always there. I think that's just expedited everything, allowing us to run many things in parallel. Yeah, it's just an exciting time, really. And then the retail revolution continues and there's uh, new ideas that our partners bring to us all the time and we're excited to work with them to implement it. Oh, yeah, that's another aspect just to round up what we were discussing in terms of the CPO because it seems like the product itself is so simple and so streamlined. It's one API, if I understood correctly. So how does the feedback loop work? Yeah, our, our, we run webinars, we have targeted sessions. So we have a whole group within the organization or for partner services. So our partner services group works uh, on the relationship aspect with our partners. So right from integration, like when they join us and they're integrating with us to the to the entire life of the relationship. So along with them, we we have targeted sessions with, with our partners to go through a roadmap. We look at their roadmap, they look at ours. So we're constantly exchanging ideas and refining things. Things. And then really for us is then about execution, like getting our APIs out there tested and uh, and keeping our, our customer service as well as our technology service area up to date so we can, you know, if we find anything, we fix it fast and we move forward. So I think that's the general sort of feedback loop is early on in the idea generation and, and clarification part then a constant back and forth as we're building things. And then it, during integration and into support, making sure we're like, you know, keeping that loop going. I'm really super excited about this future of investing that you describe where everybody can have access to investing. You don't just have to have a glut of savings in order to be able to invest. And that could have, I would say, profound uh, social impact. And then the way we interact with companies being more involved as stakeholders and, and things like that, uh, and the, the, the opportunities it creates for retailers as well to transform the relationship so it feels so much that can be done in the uk i still haven't really experienced it myself but i'm really interested in witnessing this area how it's going to, to develop how investing will change dramatically yeah absolutely and i think uh, this is this this is all over the world it's a phenomenon and that's not going to be no, that genie's not putting going back in the bottle. I think it's going to only expand. More and more people are going to want access and going to have it as we get uh, better and faster technology. I guess, yeah, the, so this whole technology is becoming available and many people are being crazily interested. I mean, it's also because we're in such a bull market, but also I, th I think there's more than that. I think there's the bull market, but also, yeah, a different approach. People are more, I think, overall more involved in their finances investing yeah absolutely it's 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 a means of wealth generation that many wealthy have used for till time began really so it's you know, everyone should think about their finances and they should think what's suitable for them and and everything and we're again we're here to enable that to happen and allow partners to really work with their end customers. But absolutely I think that many people are taking a lot more interest in their financial well-being having the confidence to uh, believe that they can do something about it. And that's so important. Back to your social change element. I think a lot of the times, a lot of people just are too scared or I can't do this. This is too complicated for me. I won't get it. I won't understand. And it takes a village. It takes a village of us and all the partners we work with and many people around the globe to, you know, allow, allow people to um, feel more confident. Well, I think that's a very positive outcome and we'll keep that as a conclusion unless you want to okay. add anything no. else. I'm good. Thank you so much, George. This was fun.